I've been working at Full Bank 10 years. I've been running as the head person now for about three. Yeah. It's got more and more demanding. The pandemic was really bad and then we had like a little lull but now it's beginning to raise its head again. Yeah, it's getting worse. We usually open up on a Tuesday morning at 9.30 but the queuing before that. What they're saying is we'll just have to put extra jumpers on. We can't afford to heat our homes but we've got to put food on the table and that's where we come in. We were originally just a top-up centre but now what we're finding out is that basically they come in here because they just cannot afford to buy the food in the shops. They've got different things and tried to pay the bills. They've very little left for the food. So it's really becoming in winter a toss up between the food and the bills. And I think, you know, the food's got to win. Otherwise they can't survive. So the rents are going up, gas electric's going up, food's going out at Windy. What do you do? How do you look after your kids? How do you look after your elderly parents? You don't, because them at number 10 haven't got a clue what's going up in real world. I've lived in Sunnyside nearly 62 years, and I've lived in the same house. I'm great-grandma twice. I'm not old enough, you can say that if you want to me. I says, I dread to think what you're going to have to go through. I don't know how to feed and clothe kids, I honestly don't. And since it's been announced about the electricity and gas, there's a lot of people worried. Hell of a lot of people worried. I mean, community centre might have to close then you'd be sitting in house, just, well, deteriorating. You've got to keep your brain going, if, even if you haven't got one like me, but you have to keep it going. You know, and talk to people, and, and that makes the world go round, though, doesn't it? It's just friends, just friendly place to come and join in, <laughs> because that's what it's all about. We are all volunteers. It's a community thing. They pull together through thick and thin. And if somebody's going through a bad time, then even more, we pull together and help them along. We just don't know nobody to go under. If we all go as individuals, it'll split, it'll not work. When I'm on my own, I tend to feel like the problems are piling up politically, socially, financially. And then when you start talking to other people, you realise everybody's kind of struggling one way or another. There's a huge amount of resilience in communities where people are really struggling. We saw this after COVID and we're seeing it now and people will come out for other people. But people are also not stupid. People know that the government are letting them down and that they're failing them on a whole measure of, of responsibilities. We do our own, we look after our own. And they all say, well, we do you this, we'll do you that. Come on then, where is it? I mean, they found that word levelling up. I've never known none be levelled up. Because they thought they were going to have a better life, well, we'll vote for them for a change. And now we're in a bigger mess than I've ever known it. I don't actually think they have any idea what it means to be in poverty in the remote rural area. I really don't. And there are a huge number of people who are in, in fuel poverty, in food poverty. You know, people are becoming more and more and more remote, not necessarily geographically, but remote from whatever else goes on in society. I don't think people in Westminster have the first idea of that. They know that they're not going to be able to afford to pay their rent um, to to feed and clothe their kids and to be able to heat their homes. I mean, that is an absolutely impossible situation to put people in. They don't know where to go for help, so that's why the food banks are becoming more and more bombarded. It's all right, that lot saying, what is it? Eat or heat? They want to try it, love. People are very, very resourceful and they will stand up for one another in their community and, you know, they'll put things in place, but that can only go so far. You know, people haven't got the resources to play the role that the, the government would play. The, the phrase that just keeps coming to mind, which was something that was used back in the 80s, was broken Britain, and we are broken. And I think we were broken then, 
but now we're in shattered little pieces and I can't see how easily we can bring it all back together. We've got really poorly insulated homes in this country and our homes leak a huge amount of energy so we're paying to put our heating on and that energy is being wasted, we're wasting our money. I can see a lot of people, elderly people, being cold in winter because they don't could put it on. They'd be sat with coats on and what have you. There is a lot that the government could do about that by by taking measures like loft insulation and, and wall cavities. But councils don't have the money to do this at the scale or at the speed that they need to. So often they're doing it in a really piecemeal way. It's taking a very, very long time. They can't go as far with upgrading homes as they would like to. This is why we're saying that we really, really need central government who have the money to kind of step in and, and play a big role in this. The pit houses, particularly in Chownertown in Maltby, they've had the outside insulation done in some of them but then because of government funding it was stopped. Personally we retrofitted it a few years ago. It made a huge difference. Our bills plummeted. We can feel a difference in the house itself and we could feel the difference in terms of what we were paying out. I think we're losing that advantage now with the bills going up and up and up and up which makes me feel so much more for the people who don't have that insulation. One thing, what they should pull the socks up and go, is insulate all homes. All homes should be insulated. Food banks, community cafes, all of these structures that have been set up with no support from the government, those structures are now becoming politicised. People are, are, are looking to the winter and they're thinking, well, like, hang on, how are we going to be able to keep this food bank running when no one can afford to give us donations? How are we going to be able to keep this community cafe running when, like, the fees for the building are, are going up? They're being just absolutely stretched to the limit. Even when we're down and out, it's like something always turns up, always, and it's never failed as yet. So we've just got to carry on in that belief that it's going to be OK. Something is changing in the public mood. People have been let down by politicians for, for, for decades, really. And that's meant that people have disengaged from politics. They might not vote, they might not see themselves as political in, in any way, but the level of, of public anger as people are being affected by this personally, their families, their neighbors themselves, that is changing. They're starting to get organized in, in their communities. They're starting to talk about, you know, protest and strike and all of these kind of ideas that are really political. I honestly think that because we went through a year of strike, I mean, I know it were in the 80s, uh, but I think myself it made people stronger. We don't get paid for our time or our cars. We use them because we want to use them. And whatever we can afford to do what we're doing, we will carry on doing it, as we have done over the last 15 years, because we want to be part of this team we want to work together for the good of the people of Maltby, and that's what matters. There's always somebody in the community what they'd help. We try to help everybody. We come back fighting. We don't lay down and die. You know what I mean? We'll come back fighting every time.